baby on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Go. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. We roll Covering MMA from all over the world, this is the premier stop for all your combat sports needs. MMA Junkie Radio, the only show broadcasting live from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The lights are on and the mics are hot. It's time to get your MMA fix, junkies. Take it away, Big John. Gorgeous George and Goes, are you ready? Junkie Nation, are you ready? Well, let's get it on. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly goes. Our ace co-host, back east, handling the producing duties, it's Andre the Giant, and our special co-host for the day, driving in from SoCal. I'm so jealous. I wish we still lived in SoCal at times, goes. I know, right? It is former three-time king of can- uh, Pank Race, also a former Pride color commentator, like the shirt guys. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Former UFC heavyweight champion, and of course, current UFC Hall of Famer, Boss Rutten. <sighs> What's going on, boss? How you doing? I'm doing great, brother. I'm doing great. I just had to, you know, after that post yesterday, I saw from Johnny Hendricks, and you said, can I go on your show? He said, yo, we can call in. I said, no, I want to do this in person. I'd rather drive the four and a half hours because that hurt me. It really hurt me what he said. If another fighter, can, people I can't care less about, you know, if they believe me or not, but a fighter thinking that I knew beforehand he was going to get scammed, trust me, man, that will never happen. Well, we have plenty of time to get into that. I, have a, I built a timeline here of how it all came to be. Uh, you know, I remember this, WBKFF last year uh, in November. The card actually did happen, but there's uh, there was some controversy leading up. And then, of course, uh, post-fight. Uh, a lot of people that have been on our show, you know, Sean Merriman's starting a new promotion out in California, and that came up. Chris Levin's fighting uh, Bare Knuckle in the other organization. That's come up. Uh, and then I read about what Johnny Hendricks had said. So uh, I, I always feel like there should be an open forum where you hear the other side. And I know you've made your Facebook post, but now we'll get to hear it from you. So, Perfect. guys, with that, let's also discuss one other bit of news here. And we will... Uh, take take on the calls and cover the news. 877-FIGHT-93 877-344-4893 Just as I was driving in, I noticed that uh, or Jumbo Josh, our producer, said that Chris Cyborg has signed on to fight UFC 240. July 27th versus Felicia Spencer. In Canada. Yeah, that's a it's the co-main event to Frankie Edgar versus Max Holloway, so that's a nice, nice fight there for, uh, for both ladies. Cyborg, who's you know, was saying I haven't fought much in the last 16 months, only once Amanda Nunez. And Felicia Spencer just got a win over Megan Anderson. She now gets to fight uh, one of the greatest of all time. Felicia Spencer is taking on a hell of a fight, right? Yeah. But if she wins, I mean, talk about gambling. That's a big payoff right there. It is for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a massive fight. And Edmonton, your card is slowly coming together because yesterday we announced Alexander Pantoja versus Davidson Figueroa. Figueredo, excuse me, uh, flyweights. Yes, they still exist. And also, again, I can't get over that main event, Frankie Edgar versus Max Holloway. That's going to be a badass fight, man. Yeah. Frankie Edgar, as tough as they come, and then Holloway. Dude, I, I just think uh, he's an animal. I always say this. You know, at Inside MMA, he lost to McGregor, you remember, all the way in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It was his first Holloway, fight. Yeah. And then after we were talking about it and say, okay, what, so that was the winner. Well, what do you think about uh, that Holloway guy? I go, I think he's going to be the next world champion. And I go, why? I said, well, for a kid like that to have distance like that and ring control, I think he's going to go very far. Mm. And I was so happy that I was right and that I actually said it so it's captured uh, because I saw it. I saw the way the distance he holds. It's very hard to do for a fighter, and he's the master at it. When did you warm up to the ladies? Was it during the Cyborg Corano days or even before in Japan? Was there a point in time where you're like, wait a minute, these ladies have skills and I see a future for them? A cyborg Carano. Okay. Yeah, I was there. Yeah. You know, with Kimbo at the time. So uh, that's where I already thought, you know, yeah, this is this is going to be awesome. And and you know, you see these girls train, and uh, and 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 the guys like a regular guy. I said, don't pick a fight with one of these girls. It's insanity. I mm-hmm. mean, there's such a shape. And and how many times did they they, did they save a show? 
Yeah. Right? That the women's fight stole the show because these girls, they just got... We, as men, know that they're way more violent than us, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and it shows Higher that. threshold of pain, too. And oh. what, what's funny <laughs> is even translating over to WWE, now they're headlining... They headlined WrestleMania. I really think it, it's one and one. They go together. Yep. Yeah, I remember... Well, this was pre-MMA, but I used to watch Christy Martin on the Mike Tyson undercards. Yeah. And I just remember any other time we had boxing at our house... You know, we we would have our friends and family come over. Whatever the main event was, was it Julio Cesar Chavez or Sugar Ray Leonard or Mike Tyson, nobody really paid attention until the main event, until Christy Martin came along and she just started pounding, you know, the other girls. She made it exciting, and now it was fun to watch the co-main event and the main event, and I always wondered if that could translate. Then, of course, came the WWE Attitude Era in the late 90s, but then we still, you know, MMA is still slowly growing, and, and Cyborg and Carano, man, they... That was something. That was something. That was something. I remember with uh, Karana at the way and she had to undress completely because she was a little heavy yeah. and the people were standing there with the towels and the whole crowd started drawing toward that spot, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it was so funny. And then her father dropped the, the towel by accident. Like one side, he goes, oh, he picks it back up. It was so funny to see She guys had a good sense of humor. I think she said, well, you guys wanted a peek or something like that. Uh -huh. She was it. able to laugh it off. And then there was always this one uh, pick someone caught of a commission official trying to get Trying to uh, yeah, 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 move that these Scooby Doo eyes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Bad. All right, uh, all right. So that that's some pretty big news there. And then one other thing, Yoel Romero. Remember, he got popped for oh, PEDs I heard that yesterday. Mm -hmm. He got twenty uh, twenty seven and some change million. Oh, I love uh, it. Yeah, he got that. He got that as a judgment for a lawsuit that he had because he argued I did not ingest anything knowingly. Uh, they went after the contaminate. Uh, excuse me, after the supplement company. And they found that Yol was correct, and he got paid. I think it was three thousand, and you know, uh, tarnished the the uh, image reputation. and the reputation damages, which is and a lot bigger than people think. Some other fees. It was so it was three, three, and three. It got to nine, but they triple because they found uh, that the company was involved in fraud. So they went from nine to twenty-seven. My oh eyes were man. bulging out. I love when, it when I read that. You know. You know now I hope he gets it because. God, I hate it when these when these things happen, and then the company, of course, Bank finds clubs. other ways. Yeah, but I really hope he gets uh, all of it, if not some of hey, it. But if he doesn't get, to him. get it all, at the very least, and I know maybe this doesn't do a lot for him, but it'll do a lot for the reputation of a lot of fighters and a lot of fans who have big mouths when these things happen to just chill and let things play out. Yeah, but you know what? This is the thing. With Inside MMA at the time also, they all say, oh, I took something. I said, where is it? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. I said, that's very convenient that it's gone. And Yol was the first one who said, I took this. And they started testing it. And yes, they found it in there. That is how you clear your name. Mm -hmm. And look at him now, man. I, I, I love this kind of stuff. He deserves it. Yeah. Twenty-seven million for <laughs> Yoel Romero. <laughs> He's got that big fight coming up against Paulo Costa. Mm -hmm. he so get twenty-seven for that. No, he's not going to get twenty-seven for that fight. But that's a big fight for him. But I think this will be a nice. You know, he's in his forties, mm -hmm. and I think we got to believe that he's in his last three to five fights of his career. He's in awesome shape. But you know, I'm sure this will assist in guiding him to his new ventures, oh, whatever those may be. He's going to buy an island somewhere very small, you know, with a f uh, Fuji or something. I uh, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. nice. Good on him, man. Uh, lastly, on our front page, another story that was blowing up was Ally Quinta, who had done uh, an interview on ESPN, the Ariel Hawani show, and he was so open about the fact that he lost to Cerrone. He credited Cerrone. He said he got his ass kicked, but the poor guy got a broken nose and a broken orbital bone. Orbital bone, um, and so he was just feeling crushed. But he says he's going to come back. He learned a lot, but very, very uh, open he was uh, in that interview. And, and again, we have a, a recap of it on our, our front uh, front page. Oh, lastly, look, another one came in. Speaking of the ladies, back to that. So UFC Fight Night on July 13th in Sacramento, Aspen Lad versus Jermaine De Randami, uh, fellow Dutch woman. Yes. Yeah, and for former featherweight champion now competing back at Bantamweight. She'll be fighting Aspen Lad, the local Sa Sacramento uh, lady who just got a win uh, recently. So Fun fight. Yeah, yeah, that is a good fight. Yeah. Good fight for both ladies. Do you know Jermaine well? Yes. Yeah. I know, well, not super well, but she came to my gym to train all the way in the beginning. You know, when she started mixed martial arts, what to watch out for, and I showed her a few things. In Thousand Oaks? In Thousand Oaks, oh, yeah. You still have the gym? Still have the gym. It's doing How's really doing? great. Yeah, I'm so stoked, man. We get uh, a lot of people. We do these challenges, like men's challenge and women's challenge. So what happens is people, 20 people sign up, and the person who wins gets a free membership for a year, you know, and then you have to train for six weeks. And if you see these results... 
you'll freak out. You go like, like that. Weight loss? No way. Weight loss. Oh, oh, nice. Like this one woman, she, she actually gained 0.1 pounds. If you look at the difference, she lost all the fat and the way she looks, uh, people go, that's no way. I go, dude, we're right there. So what happens, they do the show, they, mm -hmm. or they do the, 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 the whole thing, and then they, re they realize, oh, they need to work out from the 20, 15 are going to stay. And with the man's sales, it's the same thing because they, f they see results immediately. In six weeks, to change yourself like that, that's gold. What's the most common thing that the ones that they drop out? What do they usually say? I think it's just I think it's just life. Just life gets in the way. Yeah. You know, it, it's like when I go out. Um, uh, every time when I will go out, the guy goes like, "Oh, you should train with me." Oh, Monday I'll be there. I said, "No, you're not." He says, "No, no, I'll be there." I said, "You're going to be uh, like probably the twentieth or twenty-fifth person who tells me this, and you never come. You will really surprise me if you actually show up on Monday because now it's all nice. You have a drink and you want to go, mm -hmm. but it's just people uh, habits, man. People can't form habits anymore. Everything is short span. That's me, span. man. That's me. It's, it's a lack of drive. Killer. It's a lack of commitment. You have to pass that. What is it? The ninety-day threshold of when you start a habit or start, you know, like towards a goal, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit." They used to say 21 days. No, 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 no. It's like more like 90 days. I remember Vanderly Civil was very honest with me one time when he was trying to talk me into going to his gym. And I go, how long do you think it would take to do something with this pear-shaped body of mine? He goes, one year. And I go, what happened in 90 days? And he goes, he goes, realistically, he goes, it's a long process. He goes, after 90 days, he goes, you're well on your way. Yep. But he goes, in one year, you'll look in the mirror and go, wow, I don't even recognize myself. He goes, but you'll, he goes, all that work will also help you fight off bringing your old body back. So Listen, it's just discipline. Right? I just came back from an uh, off. I just was off because I was three months off social media. People go like, what are you doing? I was doing this uh, Catholic thing. It's called Exodus 90. So it's only cold showers, only three meals a day, two fasting days, no TV, no internet, no phones, only for your job. Whoa. You know, they cut everything out. It's, it's like Lent on, on freaking steroids. But yes, what you said when you 90 days, because I didn't know the 90 days, but like with drinking and all the other stuff, it's completely, I don't have the urge for nothing anymore. Exodus? It worked really well. Exodus 90. Hmm. Yeah, cold Catholic. showers in the winter, that was... Uh, when, 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 this can happen at any time? Or, it can happen every time. Yeah, you, you, it's you, you not can a just certain start. set of yeah. dates. But the thing is, you want to do it with the group. I did it with like 10 other guys. So we were with 11 in total. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, we have every week a meeting uh, online, you know, at uh, Google Hangout. And we talk about it, what's difficult, what's not difficult. And then uh, so, so you help yourself through it because the first month is easy. But then... It keeps on coming. And there's days that you don't want to shower. You know, I, I jumped in the pool in the <laughs> winter because I thought it was easier to go <laughs> wet right away and just do it in the pool. I was just you don't get like a that. cramp Does in your toe or your calf or nothing? <laughs> then, then we go to Colorado. And in Colorado, it's insane because like minus 23 at the time. And the cold showers, there's a whole different ballgame than California, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought Michael Dolce, he did it with us. He was <laughs> in Chicago, you know, when it was super oh. low. And it was right in the middle of we were doing the Exodus. So poor guy, man. I can only imagine my muscles my hands from washing my head I was on the shower like this and then they were hurt so bad it was so cold the water and then you sh once you hit the body the whole muscle starts cramping you're a little sissy man we're, oh, we're such man. a sissy in the uh, early days everybody used to do that I don't know I think that'd be the roughest part for me Exi Exodus part. 90 Exodus 90 90 stands for the 90 days for the 90 and days and it can start at any time it can start at any time make a group put them all together and then when are you going to do it again like in a year uh, or know. never <laughs> I'm, I'm good Retired. for now. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe if something comes along that, you know, like there's always these vices that we have, for instance, with, with drinking and me, what's with me. Now I realize that, wow, it, it was actually very easy not to do anything. And then on a Sunday, you can break one rule, but only one. So if you want to have a beer, you can drink, but you can drink only one. Or you want to smoke a cigar, you can only smoke one cigar. So for my birthday, I didn't do anything three weeks before. So on the birthday, you I like this sticky. I No, I did uh, just two. I, I did the, the special beer, it's called Sticky Monkey from Firestone, you know, dude, mm. that's such a crazy beer, it's like a port whiskey beer, Why everything concludes, it's almost like a meal, oh, it's, right, it's heavy, oh, you will love that beer, Sticky it's completely monkey. different than any beer you think is thick, and with a cigar, that combination is the best, I like mm. sweet in a cigar, like an amaretto in a cigar, or a port in a cigar, I don't like the whiskey in a cigar, but once you do the sweet, and if you can, take a Coke, I challenge everybody who smokes a cigar, a Coke and a cigar, People, once you do it, you're going to go, dude, why didn't I know this? It is so good because it's the salt and sweet thing. Mm. But you didn't want the warm shower as one of your... 
The warm showers, you know, I still do. I, I like to jump in the pool uh, and, and, uh, and I wash myself in the pool. It's cold. I like, I like the cold water. So for me, that was not a big deal. You know, but once I was in, uh, in Colorado, then I realized, okay, this is really cold. Like, I mean, this is freezing. This is <laughs> 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 I jump in the pool. It's too funny. All right. Hey, on the way in, Josh, on the way in, I caught Misha saying a little bit about the, uh, the cyborg fight. Can you just play? The, do you have any audio on that still? Yes, I do. Oh, have Andre the so Giant. Okay, can, can you right just now. play that real fast? I just w wanted to hear her reaction to it because it's big news, man. Cyborg's back. She's one of the big names of the sport. Against Cyborg, who has some serious experience, who you know is going to be more motivated than ever. If I if I could say anything about Cyborg, you know, getting a loss, I think she um, is going to be looking to make a statement why she deserves that rematch. You know, she's pissed that she's not getting the rematch, so she's going to take it out on Felicia Spencer. What else can I say? You know, who else is there at 145? Really nobody. So I guess this is the fight to make. I just um, be careful. Yeah, that goes back to the be careful. Be careful what you wish for, you know. And if Felicia sh proves me wrong, I will happily eat my words right now, saying that I, I just don't think this is a good matchup for her. Eat a cupcake. Cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... You know, I, I, I haven't seen enough out of Felicia, but what I saw against Megan Anderson, she looked pretty good to me. She made almost so no errors, right? We'll see. Flawless. Cyborg lost to another great in Amanda Nunes, but Amanda Nunes now makes more money, and now she's got two titles, and now she's going to defend Bantam. So I, I think that's just the reason why there's so much time in between fights. All right, so Boss is here, and we're going to talk a little bit about World Bare Knuckle <coughs> Fighting Federation. So we'll call it WBKFF. But let's take this quick break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. Stay close. This is going to be a fun ride here talking about this story. And I think Boss really, really wants to clear a lot of this stuff that, that's happened in the last few months.
Chicks I know. <laughs> Here we go with more verbal sparring. Take it away, ladies. The puck is just about to drop in Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Final between the St. Louis Blues and the Boston Bruins as the Bruins lead the series one game to none. Tune in to SiriusXM NHL Network Radio on SiriusXM 91 and streaming on your phone and at home on SiriusXM connected devices and speakers. All right, boss. So like you were saying early on, uh, what happened with BK, sorry, WBKFF, the World Bare Knuckle Fighting Federation last year is something that uh, has bothered you personally and stressed you out. Uh, you were put in a position where you thought you were coming in to help a company out. You've always been pro fighters in your stance for many of the years that you were with, you know, on television and uh, as a commentator or as a host of, of uh, Inside MMA. Uh, I, I know that some of this has to hurt, you know, some of the stuff that's come out. Um, now, I hadn't heard much until you gave me that call and you heard that Johnny Hendricks had done the Pull No Punches podcast. Um, and I guess this is just something that put you over the edge and you wanted to address it again maybe for a final time, but thoroughly. So that's why you're here. And yep. Um, you, do you want to? Why don't we play these sound bites so you can react to them exactly okay. how yeah, yeah. Uh, how he said it? We got the audio here from the Pull No Punches podcast. This is Johnny Hendricks uh, on WBKFF President Boss Rudin. Any any thoughts on Boss Rutten's involvement in this whole thing? Because he was obviously <coughs> hired. Yeah, the president, yeah. right? <coughs> yeah, you know that that's. Um, I've thought about that too. Yeah. Like, dude, why didn't you tell us? You know. He, he, he had to have known something. Mm -hmm. Right? He had to have. Um, was, he, was he sitting here speaking the same thing on the same lines as that guy? Hey, after this fight, you know, we're going to make this money and I'm going to stay out of jail and da 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 da. Or did he have the aspect of, hey, you know what? I'm 10% owner, so as soon as that money hits his bank account, I get paid. And if he gets screwed over, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think so because he's not really, you know, I haven't heard much out of him. I, right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, well, yeah, why hasn't he said anything? You know, I've been trying to keep my mouth shut because, like I said, <laughs> yes, we got bent over and there's really nothing to change. Okay, so that's audio number one. Um, how do you react to that? No, I, f for me, it's like, listen, I fought for $2,000 over in Japan. I started with that. You know, I know how hard it is for fighters. So for a fighter to believe that I might have known anything about, if there was any red flag, I would call it off right away and I would tell the fighters, don't, don't fight it. You know, I told Johnny, as I did all the fighters, you can ask every single person, Jimmy Lennon Jr., everybody was involved. I told him, listen, I saw the bank statements. Mm -hmm. Because I asked to my lawyer, Sam Spire, I, I said, hey, listen, I, I, I need to see proof of funds. Because once that money is there, I'm going to be okay with it. For me, my number one priority is that the fighters get paid. So they send proof of funds. And I brought it also here because then you can see it. I don't want to post this, of course. These are his bank accounts. But you can see that in these three accounts here, they have over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, he's going to have the money. And especially after we start renegotiating because the company was just taken advantage of. That right. was because there was a guy who, was, who, who had a, 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 a car and truck business. And who thought that Paul Tyler, that matchmaker, that he was going to be, um, that he was a, a trustworthy guy. And this guy said that, yeah, I didn't do big shows, but I did like 50 small shows. I know everything about it. I got to give him one thing. The matchmaker, he, did, he put on a phenomenal show. But for the rest, he's just a piece of crap. It's mm -hmm. amazing what he did. It will come out. We'll talk in a little bit. So this was October of 2018. You joined WBKFF to join with Thomas Stankowitz. Yep. Right. We'll just call him Tom here. Uh, and in November, so when you got there, what you saw, because I read your Facebook post, the original one from last year, what you saw was just salaries that didn't make sense for a company that it, it just wasn't going to survive paying out the way it did. And that's why, you, that's why you're talking about the renegotiation, correct? But immediately, because I came in, first of all, I came in as a commentator. And, and, and let me clear this out, because people have been already on, they, they go like, oh, now he suddenly says he wasn't the president. That was just to get your attention, I'm saying that. And actually, on paper, I was never the president, because I didn't sign my contract. I was renegotiating, and we were trying to save the show. I said, 
And, but what I want to show with that statement is that's how much I trusted Tom. Because if I wouldn't have trusted Tom, you think I wouldn't have signed it? Of course I signed it. Because it's my only hold that I'm going to get what I deserve. Uh -huh. But I didn't care about it. My care was, okay, these guys been training. The show might be off now. They've been training for nothing. We need to get them money. We need to have the show going. And that was my main focus on. That's why I trusted Tom. And I figured we'll figure that out after. Yeah, I was going to be the president. I only needed to sign. It was all there. But I didn't sign it. So technically I didn't lie. But, you know, I'm of course, I eventually I was going to be it. It was just to prove to the people that's how much I trusted Tom. Okay. And then in November, the show does go off. But on Fight Week, I'm reading, again, that it's just a fiasco up in Casper, Wyoming. The commission is, is uh, not allowing certain fighters to fight. Some of the negotiations aren't going well. Uh, some of the fighters that had wanted to get fronted some money. They're only claiming that they got half of it, so it's just stinking all over the place. Yep. But you stand by Tom yep. that this is not the culprit here, the, the bad guy. No. It's FFM, FMM. Well, you it's Paul Tyler. You okay. know, it, it is him. So, so what happened was this also. We sent $10,000 to Johnny. Well, they did because I wasn't there yet at that moment. They yeah. sent $10,000 to train and $10,000 to Brennan, uh, Brennan Ward. But they only received $5,000. Now, once this matchmaker, Paul Tyler, stopped messing up, messing up, messing up, which I saved his butt like two, three times because I figured, hey, he's an ex-junkie. And I say junkie because he stole money to, to supply his drug habit. Otherwise, you're an addict. Mm -hmm. But that's what a junkie does. So he was a junkie. And I thought, this can really turn his life around. Let's give him another chance. Let him just focus on the matchmaking. He did a great job. Let's do that. But he kept doing it. And then they found out, because I wasn't there at that moment, they found out that he was using. And they, they fired him. And that's where the whole problem started because then we suspect it was him. I cannot say it 100% guarantee, but he was the only guy who knew the bank from, from Tom, you know, which bank it was because he dealt with that bank. Somebody called the bank and they said, hey, they're money uh, this is a money laundering thing, they're drug dealers. Boom, security came in. And all these people who said this was from the start, I have it and I will post these ones. I have it here from the financial group, the BMO financial group, investigated services. You see, there's the proof that the bank account got frozen. And then Tom ended up in the hospital because he was so, he was so emotional. He's crying on the phone. He had two early onsets, heart attacks. He's like, boss, I never sold even a gram of weed. What are they trying to do with me? He was never in the hospital. Here are the admission papers from the hospital. And it was 20 pages. I just picked one page out. But in my email, it's like 20 pages because they go through the whole series of things. So all the things that they said, oh, it was a, it was a scam from the beginning. This here proves it. This is immediately gone. Why I trust, trust Tom still is because to me, he never lied. To these guys, he never lied. Online, they go like, oh, it's either boss is in it, with it, uh, with, within with the scam, or he's not. And they go, what about the third option? What about we're all telling the truth here? And that's what I still believe. And Tom still, till this day, I just talked to him before he went to jail, which is last week, for that other thing we can go in it, in, into a little bit. And he still tells me, boss, I could have filed bankruptcy, you know, but I made a mistake in my past. And I was not going to make the mistake again. And my lawyer told me twice now already to file bankruptcy. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to pay the fines. Am I going to be able to pay them everything? No. But at least if I can pay them half, I'm going to feel uh, half. I'm going to feel good about myself. So he's still working when on that. When did he say that? The last Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I talked to him last Tuesday but just before he went in because I said, I need an update. When you came in and you saw those salaries, you knew that, that uh, it, it for one, it wasn't realistic because it was way more than a lot of these fighters had, had earned before. But I, I don't know that you were so much concerned about that, but more about the sustainability of, of the, the company. company, right? If you want me as a president, here right. we go in, and the main and the co-main event is together 1.25 million and some change. Mm -hmm. And from the four fighters, three are represented by the same manager. Something's fishy to me here. And when you, right? when you tried to renegotiate with the fighters... How did they take it? Did they well, take it like you were ruining their, their payday party? Or, or did they understand, well... Because, honestly, do you remember the World MMA Awards? Yeah. From last year. It was around July. We started... There was this little cocktail before, you know, for an hour. And we're sitting around with drinks and just talking. And one of the things that came up was a few fighters saying, there's a new promotion and they're paying 500000 and a million. Mm -hmm. And we were like, whoa. You know, and it was bare knuckle. We were like, how are they going to do that? You know? Exactly. But then it all, you know how this combat sports world is. It just, <laughs> next thing you know, you're in October, November, and you're reading things. You're like, oh, I wonder if that was it. You know? But that was my reaction. It's like, wow, why would they pay, you know, so much? I don't like to hate on anybody who can 
get a hustle like that if they can. And someone's got the money to pay it, I understand. Mm -hmm. But it, but you think of like affliction. That's me as a fan. Yeah, that's me as a fan president. reading it. But if I'm the one that's responsible or I'm brought in, I could understand why I'd have to step in and say, well, listen, man, this we're not going to last here. You've been taken advantage of. Brandon Ward got 50 and 50 at Bellator. They offer him 250 and 250. Johnny Hendricks says, nobody offers me a fight. You come suddenly, you guys come at 250. I could not believe what was going on. And that's exactly what I told them. Sean Merriman never fought a bu boxing match in the start. $600,000. And then Mike Burke. And Mike Burke got pulled, actually, from the Athletic Commission because they saw a fight in, uh, in Romania with him, which was not anywhere written down. And I don't know what. Just watch the fight and be yourself. Mike Bork, Romania boxing match, whatever. Google that and see what you think. He doesn't get hit. He just falls on the ground. He starts rolling on oh, the ground. That's and right. Yeah, I, did see that. I mean, you see what I mean? So year. the athletic commission saw that, and so that actually that was helping us because now Merriman was off the chart. But I wanted him because that guy is such a freak athlete, you know. And I really wanted to see what he could do in fighting. But we simply didn't have that money. None of them would agree to lesser money. No. It, well, we started negotiating, and of course we said, listen, if you really because he said. I can get 200,000 pay-per-view buys. Okay, what if we give you five bucks per pay-per-view buy? We, di we didn't care at that moment anymore. This was the last two weeks. There was such a heated... That was when I found out I'm not made for this, man. I don't want to negotiate the screaming and back and forth the whole time. I mean, I say, oh, five bucks. Give him five bucks per pay-per-view buy. You've got to make a million dollars. That's way more than you have. Why don't you want to do that? If you're sure you've got to get 200,000 pay-per-view buys, why don't you do that? Of course, they didn't want to do it because they want security. And I can understand that. I can understand everything that happened. Don't, they, don't, don't think that I say, oh, these guys are bad. No, because they were offered that. And of course, nobody wants to come down from that money. But realistically, why didn't they offer Ward the double? Give him 100 and 100. He was going to jump through the roof. I guarantee you that. Why 250 and 250? Because his manager negotiated that. You know, because he thought, hey, there's money. Oh, let's go, let's go. That's the same manager Merriman, same manager Bur Burk, right? And the money kept going up, and then we have the whole rest of the card. So, yeah, immediately I knew we've been taken advantage of. This is this is insanity. We can never sustain this. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I want to play just the, the other Hendrix audio. This is, again, this is what set Boss off and, and why he's here. And then that will be done with the uh, Johnny portion, and, and then we want to address um, Chris Lieben and some others. All right, so this is Johnny Hendricks, cut number two from the Pull No Punches podcast. And that's the thing is that, you know, a perfect example, how hard is it to sit here and say, you know, be up front. Yeah. First off, if they're, if they're really worried about their gates, then why do they hold it in a place that only holds like 3,500, 4,000 people? Totally. That's a lie. Right? So... So if we want more gate, why don't you hold it somewhere where, you know, maybe 8,000 people can show up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then there's a lot of other things that you're just sitting here going, it might be because I've been in the game so long that I understand the, the, the numbers. Okay. Okay, first of all, yep. the, the place holds 15,000 people. But we realized we were never going to sell those tickets. And that was the first thing I said. When they offered that, I said, why did you do that? Find a place that holds 2,500 people and fill it up. Let it be a sellout. That's way more impressive than go for 12, 12 15,000 people. You could never fill this thing. So we literally had took one-third of that place. We put the curtains in between. And that was the, and, and we, I was like, what the heck? 3,500 people showed up. Again, from those, there were a lot of tickets stolen. We had another guy working for us, not uh, Paul Tyler, another guy who starts selling these tickets. That's what we guess on the side because he doesn't want to see us anymore and doesn't want to talk anymore. But for $80,000 tickets got stolen that Tom had to pay taxes over. Wow. You see, so that that also on top of that, that's why I think we had 3,500 people over there. I think he just gave them away really cheap. Yeah. I've listened to, you know, Johnny and I've listened to Chris Lieben who also did something um, a few months ago. And... They don't look like they're vin like being vindictive or no. anything. I think it's a lot of frustration, and I think because there's still this uh, anticipation of possibly still getting paid, and and you're still holding true that that that's what Tom's intention is, right? Yeah, because you know if they say it was a scam from the beginning, right? Let's let's talk about that. Okay, he's got to be the dumbest scam artist on the planet. Why did he order? Uh, hoodies, shirts, t-shirts, man, every freaking size, man and woman. I mean, he's got a crap load of that stuff. Why did he order the most expensive insurance for the fighters? Hey, dude, if this was going to be a one-time thing, he said, no, no, I want the best for my fighters. Why did he order two uh, plastic surgeons? Why not go with the guys who came with uh, with the ambulance? Because they can stitch them up too. No, 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 the fight's going to get cut. It's bare knuckle boxing. I want the best uh, insurance for them. I want it, uh, that they 
have the least amount of uh, stitches. So all these things, you go like, oh, if this was a scam from the beginning, why did he? This, this blows your mind. Most fighters had three corners. This is the first show that is two extra tickets because normally your first show you do one corner. Main event, co-main, you get two corners, right? Come on. But no, no, two, three guys, that's two, three plane tickets extra, two, uh, three rooms extra, of the per diems, all, all that stuff was more money. The guy just had no clue what he was doing and he believed, put all his trust. Tom's biggest crime is that he believed what Paul Tyler was selling. That is Tom Baker's crime. Tom is 500,000 in the hole. He lost his company. It's going to be sold, his property now. He's completely done. He's working with an, uh, a, a trucking company right now. And he, uh, they promised him that he was going to get 30 trucks. And then he started calling. This is about two months ago. He started calling a lot of fighters. He says, listen, I'm getting this new job. I find a way. You guys are going to get at least paid half, you know, and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. But what happened was this guy started with six. And it went up to eight. And now he's up to 15 trucks. Now, he's now in jail, but his girlfriend is running this whole thing. Once he comes out, he says, boss, it will be there. It will go 20, 25 trucks. Once that happens, because he has to pay insurance over every... He told me the whole thing. It's a freaking nightmare to listen to. But he said, then I'm going to be able. I really want to do this because I already made a mistake in my life. I want to make this right for the fighters. I don't want to have this on my soul. So I, I have to believe him since nothing that he did to me was been a lie. Because oh, I have the proof right here. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the scam because he was in the hospital. His bank got frozen. There's the proof. You know, so, and, and the bank accounts, proof of funds. I told everybody, well, you just saw it. They got, I, and I'll show you, it's got over a million dollars in there. But what he didn't realize is that once he started focusing on WBKFF, he's, he's paid less attention to his own company, and that starts slowly but surely start going over his head. And then, when, the, when he got on Frozen, he already told me, I can't do it. I mean, I'm down now. I'm going to have to wait for the pay-per-view money, and I will pay him from that. I said, cool, as long as they're going to get paid, you know, we'll freaking figure it out. And then the pay-per-view money came back, and I don't know if it's still true, but I saw it. I can show you the numbers also. I think it was either 8,638 or 36 or 6,836. That was the total pay-per-view money. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do it from there. Now everybody was gone. And, oh, yeah, but boss wouldn't get paid. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. It cost me money. Oh, how can you cost money? Well, let takes, uh, let's uh, break this down. When I came in, everything was signed. All the contracts were signed. Everybody. I had nothing to do with the fighters, absolutely whatsoever. I was responsible for Bert Watson. And by the way, any person who wants to start an organization, that's the guy. He saved our show, man. Bert Watson, I have, uh, so many thanks. I hated that we didn't get more money because I wanted to give him double at the end. But since I hired him, I paid him out of my own account. Jimmy Lennon Jr., since I hired him, I paid him out of my own I asked him. Ask them from what the wire tab came from, of the wire money for my, for my account. Uh, Kenny Rice, fortunately for me, because I just made a large investment, I simply didn't have it. People go like, oh, he's on TV, and the internet says he makes between 6 and $10 million. Dude, don't believe what the internet says. People, oh, you're going to be a millionaire when you're on TV, George? Is, a, is every person on TV is that a millionaire? Come on, man. Lighten up. If I would have it, trust me, I will pay it, and then I will ask Tom back. But I paid... Jimmy, I paid Bert Watson, and then Stitch Duran, I hired him as well, but when I text him and I say, how much do we owe you? Somehow he came back, he says, oh, we're all square, they're asking when you have your next show. So that was a big surprise for me, because I didn't have to pay, and then Kenny Rice, he didn't want to take my money, he said, boss, you're my friend, I know what's going on, what happened, I don't want your money. So, I did work for two months, very hard, didn't get paid, but it cost me money, since I had to pay Jimmy and Bert. So, everything that you're telling us makes sense. What happens when you speak to the fighters? Was, was there like a lack of communication or did they just not believe it? No, this was a, a thing also. For instance, uh, I had um, uh, Alessandro, uh, the manager from uh, uh, Joey. Um, he, he started screaming at me and he, you're going to go to jail and blah, blah, blah. We said warrants out and we're screaming and, and I'm trying to get a hold of him. And my wife goes like, why, why would you get, want to talk to a guy like that? Sonny, he's misinformed. He's just misinformed. And as a manager... I love it when somebody is not respecting me. You're like, oh, it's boss Ruth and I can't. No, he went full on to me, you know. And I respect that because I go like, dude, if I was a fighter, I want to have a manager like him. Mm -hmm. So actually, if I would have an, a fighter somewhere, you know, who needs a manager, I go knock on his door because he's going to stand up for you. I know that 100%. So once I got a hold of him, I started explaining to him. And then everything came to light. I can send him some files. I sent him some things. And he goes, oh, dude, yeah, now he saw it was honest. And then with all the other guys that I spoke with, the same. A lot of them. Nick Gonzalez, I mean, CJ uh, Levesque. I, I, I talked with a lot of guys. Nobody got ever 
not called back or not text back by me. Texting immediately call back if as soon as I had the time, whether it was then or maybe 10 minutes later, whatever it was, I always answered everybody back and I told everybody so they knew about it. And then Tom called a lot of these fighters also when he got that new contract and he says, oh man, I think I can do this thing. So yeah, that the problem was some of them didn't listen. And I got to tell you personally, because I thought that he was talking to, uh, to Tom, Johnny, I didn't personally talk to Tom, uh, Johnny. I did to Chris Lieber for a long time. And Chris, you know, he's 100% right. He should. Uh, I would do the same thing. Sue the company, man. Because Tom cannot use it. Trust me at this moment. Because he's in jail, he cannot have that. So, you know, this is a great time. Do it. Because you need your money back. Completely understandable. So I don't, I don't blame anything on the fighters. But I'm blaming. Don't see him as a bad guy. I say Tom is really down he lost it completely he's lost his company over five hundred thousand dollars all the tickets everything that he did everything is gone he's got the warehouse with freaking gear that he can't sell to anybody nobody who was uh, if it was a scam from the beginning would do those kind of things he would have none done gear because he knows he's not going to have a second show right yeah okay now on um, when you recapped what happened at the event you said that um <sighs> Man, I forgot this part. Okay, you made Tom write all the checks. What was it that was happening? I okay, that was uh, the fire alarm. The, the fire alarm, that's but right. But that. but was another attempt to sabotage the show. No, but check this out. So yeah, we'd be coming alarm. up, right? There's this guy who does the music, right? Sound, this guy comes up. So I'm explaining. He's like 65 years old, been doing it for a long time. He says he's got one job. The only thing you need to do is put this slider up. When they announce the fighter, You're you let raise the music. Your hand or something like that? Yeah. yeah. He, no, I said, first I said he goes into the ring, yeah. and once he's in the ring, you turn it down, you wait till they announce the next one, and you do with the other one he couldn't not get it i said you know what i'm sitting right here just look at me and then when something happens i do this bring the music up and bring the music down we got this music starts we have a minute of dead air <laughs> because the guy i'm looking at the guy he's talking to somebody behind him he's, he's, he's literally has his back against me on a live show right so i'm running and i'm getting in his face you got one freaking job he can't i'm screaming to him mike bronzola sits there <coughs> mike says because he said no it's not working it's not working mike goes he just pulled the plug he and did I go, it on purpose? Well, this to this. He just pulled a plug. What plug? That plug. Put the plug back and everything and was safe. Wow. So what do you think? And then we go to the hotel. We're signing the checks. And now the fire alarm goes off. So, you know, I go like, no, we're not going to go out. Let everybody go. We lock the door. We're going to write the checks. And we're going to give the fighters the checks. Because so this I'm is still Tom writing the checks to the fighters that just performed that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And so I take it those checks... Weren't they, 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 they didn't clear it. That's did. why there's this problem. Yeah. Did some clear? It did some fighters get paid? No, I think uh, some fighters got everybody. like 500. He got 1,200. He got. To, he paid some fighters. He he gave me a whole note with uh, what he, he he paid the fighters. But I, I don't have there. But it's not. It's virtually nothing. So uh, I've never been on that side. But I always thought, and you you said you have some numbers there, that when you present what you have. It, the commission, which in this case would be Wyoming, that was the thing. They right. hold it in escrow and they issue the checks because it's all yep. said and protected by then. That that's their that's their purpose. They protect they you. You know, they, they have you weigh in. The matchmaking has to be fair. Some guy with forty fights can't fight someone with one fight. All that, but then at the end, yeah, th they didn't have it. No, they didn't do that over in Wyoming. Okay. And the thing also was, they told us, "Oh, you're going to get the Wyoming police is going to come. They're going to arrest you." I said, "They're not." And I said, what do you mean? I said, because Tom is talking to them every two weeks. They saw the bank investigation numbers. They yeah. saw the bank got frozen. They knew the truth. We knew we weren't going to. Because they went in all his emails. They checked everything. They know he was telling the truth. That's why I'm saying Tom, Tom's biggest crime is that he believed Paul Tyler. That's the thing. And that's when it went down. And when the bank, if the bank wouldn't have been frozen, I should show you the numbers here. If the bank wouldn't have been frozen, he, would, he had a million dollars here. Three accounts. This is one. Here, you can see. This is 433, and that is account 7197, right? Uh, that's this one. This one here, this is account uh, 1797, so 1791, 1797. It's got over 435, so this one, just, uh, do you know that's a different accounts? And then you got here this one. Oh, this is the one I think. 7169, this one had only like 100,000 in there. But together, all of them were a million dollars. And that was the card, including the, the production cost, in, including everything, would have been. So that was the proof of funds to me when he showed that. I said, okay, now I want to do it 
because they have the money. Okay. But once right. you get frozen, that was it. 90 days. We'll continue it. talking about this. we got to take this quick break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. We have Boss Rudin in the house. And also, later on the show, we're going to have one of the two participants who's going to be fighting for that vacant Bantamweight title at UFC 238. That's right. Marlon Marias is stopping by. So stay close. Okay. Don't touch that dial. We're going to continue talking about WBKFF and what happened uh, November of 2018. If you'll recall, a fight card with Johnny Hendricks and Dakota Cochran, who stepped in for Brennan Ward, Phil Baroni versus Chris Lieben, nine other fights. Uh, was going to have Sean Merriman, and slowly but surely, the, some of the card fell apart. A few fighters stepped up, but there's been some controversy with some payments, and Boss is here to answer all questions. So uh, let's continue going down these lists. First one that jumps out at me is what happened to Paul Tyler? Uh, I have no clue. Yeah. The 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 thing was that he was busy again. We we had this uh, thing. We had to go. We were going to do an uh, for sponsorship. We were, had an appointment with Pfizer. This it gives you a little bit of a there. And I'm driving with him because that's the four days that I met him. That was the first time four days I was in Chicago to meet him. And he was swerving over the road the whole time. And I go, dude, I w what's okay? You want me to drive? No, no, it's good. Don't worry. I've never been in any accident. Uh, later on, we found out that's why he got fired. That he was still using. So I, I mean, it was very dangerous. That I was there. 
Anyway, it's everything is slow, slow. Can't find the adders. Can't find. I go, dude, these guys are not going to wait. Oh, they wait. I said, it's Pfizer, dude. They got. There's a billion dollar company, multiple billions. It's the mm -hmm. biggest company you can get. So finally, we get there. I'm running. He's still slandering behind me. He has to put a suit on next to the car, right? Smoking <laughs> cigarette. Let's not smoke a cigarette. Let's just got go, go, go. We need to go. We need to be there on time. I want to be on time. Being on time is 20 minutes being early. That's being on time, you know, mm -hmm. in my book. So we come inside, and he goes like, yes, it's, uh, we have an appointment with Jake. And the guy goes, uh, we have 1,700 people working with Jake. He goes, um, <laughs> sits on his phone, sits on his phone. Okay, I said, get his name. You know his name. You don't know, you know his last name now. Call him. You text him, right? Yeah, yeah. that's my other phone. It broke down. I go, okay, let me guess. So, and that phone, every fighter has your phone and it's broken down. How are they con connecting you? He couldn't find a thing. We're there for, for nothing. We drove like an hour and 15 minutes for nothing because he couldn't find the guy's last name. That's what we were dealing with. They made po sponsor packages for half a million dollars. They thought they were going to get half a million dollars from Pfizer. I said, dude, they want to see your show first. You know, and then once they see a show and they see it's well done, then maybe the next show they will do it. My, you might get a guy for 25000 and then you tell him, you know, if you jump on board with us now, the next four shows, even if you get big, we won't increase the price, you know. But that's about it that you're going to get. But Tom was in the on, under the impression that Paul was telling the truth. And we're going to get half a million experience. here. Well, you must have thought you were on a comedy show, just everyone punking you left and right. Well, right? You, you just said it to me. The first question that Paul Tyler oh. asked me on the phone, he says, uh, hey, boss, uh, is it true we need to get prostitutes for the fighters? <laughs> and I go like, I go, yeah, 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 get them. I said, if you want to run the company into the ground, that's a really smart. I said, how, how do you come even up with that? Do you see a movie? How, how is that even possible that that's in the mind of somebody? You're going to need prostitutes for the fighters. Well, so nice way to talk about the fires, by the way. So he never found the name, even on on the phone? He never, never found, found it. the he name. He just about face and walked wow. out with your tail between your legs? And what were you thinking when you got back in the car? I was livid. I, I, wh what am I going to do? I knew, okay, this is not going to go anywhere. And then when I came home, yeah, that's when he got fired because he made another mistake. And then, you know, somebody called the bank, which we believe it's him, but, you know, I, I can never say that's 100%. What, that's what froze the funds that you showed me. That's it. Yep. Those were the funds that were going to pay uh, the fighters. Yep. Even some of the fees that had been agreed upon that were higher than maybe you had opined, but, but still. Everybody, everybody was getting money that they never heard of before. You know, because everybody wants to jump on the show because they hear, wait a minute, he's got 250 and 250. I want to fight that. You said it, right? You said you were at the MMA awards. Uh -huh. and, and I uh, heard that. July, and people saying, oh, they pay him 500,000, 500,000 this. And you go like, there's no way that people can do That's a UFC card. And they get points on the pay-per-view. Yeah. 99% you know? of me didn't believe it. Only 1% believed it. And you know why? Because mm. Calvin Air from Bodog had some incredible stuff down in Costa Rica. And I heard he paid good money. Mark Cuban. So billionaires dip their toe in our sport and then realize, oh, wait a minute. You don't just, the money just doesn't come in with one show. I know there had been a lot of Russian outfits as well that had been backed <laughs> by billionaires that had paid good money. So I thought, well, maybe this just happens to be one of those situations where someone yeah. wants to come in strong, like Affliction. They paid Tim Sylvia 800000 yeah. paid or a million. Matt Lindland, 300000 They're paying salaries that were way more than the UFC had, and that's why a lot of those fighters left the UFC early on to go to to go to affliction and you know, e even half of those would have been weird i think mm -hmm. yeah a and even as a fighter i think you would kind of do especially if you've been in this business long enough you'd kind of do the math and go this sounds well, great well, but rothwell was what what did you rothwell was 800 or six no, tim sylvia i remember made eight hundred thousand. But rothwell i think six or something right or five something we eight could eight probably eight look it up because california releases and i remember looking incredible at incredible about or something like that vitor orlovsky yeah. a Never lot of the fighters more than 50 and they give him five or six hundred yeah. Yeah, that's throwing stupid money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Another thing I wanted to ask you here. Well, you told me about the sound guy. That was a pretty funny story. I'm sorry. Uh, Boss Rudin MMA on his Twitter handle. He's got links to his Facebook. And on his Facebook, he tells some pretty detailed stories about how all this went down. Uh, but, you know, with, with uh, WBKFF. Um, <laughs> you know, but anyway. All right, a couple more things I wanted to ask you here, boss. Well, actually, you know what? We're coming up against the top of the uh, t top of the hour. We're going to take a quick break, yep. and then we're going to come back, and then we'll continue with some of these questions here. Uh, folks, we are also going to be talking to Marlon Marias. Marlon Marias is facing Henry Cejudo at UFC 238. Ooh. The winner gets the uh, the undisputed bantamweight title. Being uh, that's not being held by anybody because T.J. Dillashaw relinquished it when he. 
uh, got suspended, you know, for two years by USADA. So that is an interesting fight. You got the UFC flyweight champion moving up, and he's going to be uh, fighting against the number one contender. Mm -hmm. um, Mariah basically would have been fighting Dillashaw, but the UFC has found this situation with Cejudo. Uh, you yeah. know, originally he he defeated TJ Dillashaw, and I guess part of the deal was, hey, Dillashaw can come down and try and get my title, but if I win. Uh, then I want a shot at his title. Well, yeah. Excuse me if I lose. Or I forget how that worked but out. Ali explained it to us. Um, <laughs> and so that's why he's kind of, that's getting paid off right now. You There's know what so I mean? much on the line just with belts. But when have you ever seen that a possible division is on the line as well? Yeah, that's the other thing is a lot may ride with Henry Cejudo if he wins. Well, he may want to be the Bantamweight champion and just defend there. It's an extra 10 pounds the of uh, muscle that he can put on and less weight that he has to cut. And, of course, if he loses, he can come back to the division. And that's why I think the UFC is holding on to, like, 10 contracts. Benavides, Figueredo, Pantoja, and a few others. Team. But the rest have been released. All right, we'll tackle all that when we come back. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation Channel 156. We'll be back in 60 seconds. All right, we got Boss Rudin in the house, former UFC heavyweight champion, former three-time world uh, king of Pancrase, excuse me, current UFC Hall of Famer. He was also a uh, the host of Inside MMA. How long? You guys, 10 years went, right? Nine. Nine, nine seasons, years. Yep. Yeah, 431 nine seasons. shows. That was amazing. Uh, he's done color commentator everywhere. And So, Boss, let's pick apart a couple questions here yes. and a couple comments that I have. Um, one thing that Chris Lieben said was when you came into – WBKFF, um, did any of your – did you do any vetting of your own, you know, like did you – you know, because what put Thomas Stankiewicz in jail is mortgage fraud. That was the thing you said, the yep. other thing that he's in jail for. Yeah. Um, did any of these red flags come up in just researching it or – did and, and also how did they even bring you uh, on board? Because some of these stories you're telling us – look, we're having a, a laugh here and all that, but this Paul Tyler guy and whoever else, the sound guy, these don't sound like professionals in combat sports. So were there any red flags or any concerns or were there any things that you might have missed that maybe would have alerted you to, you know... All, no, all was no, there wasn't. What was the first thing you said? Because I wanted to answer on that. Oh, the mortgage fraud? The mortgage fraud. Yeah. Okay, so what happens is when I came in and I was sitting there and we were having dinner, I said, okay, give me the skeletons in the closet. Yeah, what do you mean? I said... Tom, we're going to face an uphill battle. This is bare knuckle boxing. A lot of media is going to be against it. They think it's worse than boxing, which actually it's safer. CTE wise, it's safer than boxing. Yeah, but you're going to get more cut. We, they're going to Google you. They're going to figure out whatever you did be wrong. I want to know right now. He says, "Well, I did this fraud thing. I, they, I got caught. I made a whole." Um, uh, he worked with the, with the, with the court. Mm -hmm. he, he said everything right. He's going to pay uh, back what he's owed and then some. And then if everything is going to be perfect, you know, what she's already doing. He, he was wearing an ankle monitor that she showed me. And he said then, uh, so I paid my price. I paid everything. And I said, okay, I'm okay with that. That's a thing I can work with because you paid your dues. You did everything. Now, if, if this guy would have been a pedophile, uh, what if he beat up women or whatever it is, put a gun in somebody's head and get money, that's a different story. Boss would the checks out. But if he paid everything, in fact, if the WBKFF wouldn't have happened, he wouldn't have done no jail time. But because this happened, now he's going to do probably five months. The internet said 36 months. 
but because you already paid everything back and they had a whole plan for these people for to get their money back, that's why for the, the mortgage fraud. The mortgage okay. fraud. That's why he said, okay, you know, uh, we, he's not going to get any jail time. Then the WBKFF happened, and boom, this happened. And then I come back to this one more time because people go like, oh, why would you go? Okay, he paid his dues. He paid it what he did. He made it right. So that's what I'm doing. And the fighters actually should be happy with this. And why is that? Because he told me personally on the phone. He said, "Boss, they told me twice already to 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 uh, to file bankruptcy." I said, "No, because I already made a mistake in my life, and I don't want to do this again. I want to make. I want to do what is right. I want to pay these fighters. Can I pay him all the whole money? No, but I can probably pay him half. So that's why." So Sean Merriman went through litigation. Chris Levin's going through litigation. And I guess Johnny Hendricks, I, I haven't heard of the other names. I think they've all done their rounds of media or whatever. But Johnny Hendricks is the last one who just feels like he's been slighted or he's got questions. It's the what, worst. Do you, what do you say to Johnny Hendricks now? Do you plan on having a conversation with him? I would love to. You know, it, listen, I, I, I don't blame him anything. I don't blame him anything, Johnny. I'm, I, I'm just, it hurt me when somebody would even have the slightest thought that I would not be behind the fighters. I can care less about everybody. For me, the main goal was for the fighters to get paid. That is my main goal. So when somebody suddenly comes out and boss would have had to know something about it, that's why I took the four and a half hour drive to come over here and not doing it through a phone interview. I want to do this and I'm going to drive four and a half hours back. I want to be in the studio. I want you ask me the hard questions. Let people call in asking hard questions, whatever they want to ask. I'm an open book. What I say is 100% truth. You don't believe it? I don't care if you don't believe it. I'm telling the truth. God knows I'm telling the truth. My friends and family know me and my loyal fans. Well, 90 eight percent everybody goes like dude come on don't even talk about it you're, we know your character mm -hmm. i would never do something like that P put a google search out say who got ever uh, stolen money from from boss with or the boss did something to i get I dare to find one person one person who i ever did something to and stole money from or whatever i did mm -hmm. and i'm just not that guy i never did that in five months it could be that tom <laughs> stankowitz comes out not the 36 39 months that, no. that, that, that i read as well um how well, I know this is a number that's going to be tough because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get pinned on you. But what has Tom told you? What does it sound like as far as like an outline for when he gets out? Is there already some money available or is this going to... No. So so what he I says is this. He, he has to pay a lot for the trucks. Every truck that he has is like $1,500. I don't know any what's Two weeks or two per month uh, as insurance. Just that. So he said, there's a lot of money that I invest. It will come back. With 30 trucks, yes, I was going to pay these fines. And that's what they promised me. But it started with five or six. Mm -hmm. And now it's going up. Now it's going up. I think it's like 12 now. I don't know anymore what he said. But he said, it will go up. It will be at 25. I will be able, once this happens, to start and pay the fighters. And again, I'm telling you, it's not gonna, they're not going to get everything. Mm -hmm. But he wants to pay him at least half and, and you know and i think if he could do that yeah that that at least will make a lot of things right again because a lot of these guys get overpaid anyway you know so if they had but you know i feel i feel for every single one nick gonzalez i mean no gonzalez i'm talking to him his his tools got stolen his regular job his tools got stolen out of his truck like 12 on the thing and i go tom can you find 12 on the box man give at least tools you know we we need to do something here i feel so horrible but, you know, it, I cannot do anything. What? I'd pay it? I had nothing to do with that. Listen, and if I had the money, if I literally was what these people say, I wrote it to Alessandro, actually. I sent him a video of me t typing one of those bus routes network. Alessandro's the manager for who again? For Joey uh, Belcher? Joey Angelo. Oh, Joey Angelo. Angelo. Okay. And he uh, and I said the, the the email I I showed it as well that I said hey could you guys please let me know where I have that money and what account because I can't find it and I'm not greedy I'll take one million because if I have money I will pay it I will get it back from Tom I'm pretty sure of that because I still believe I have to believe because he didn't lie anything to me I have the proof right here why would I not believe him see what I mean so as long as, now if he doesn't pay and he comes out he's got 25 trucks he doesn't pay he's done that's it but until then well he didn't lie anything to me. And not to the fighters as well. That was going to be my question was, what about the conversations with you and Tom regarding yourself? Because you did a lot for the company at the time. And even post, you've been still having to do things and clear your name as well, right? Like, what have your conversations with him in regards to you been like? Well, it's, it's killing me. It's, it's really killing me. You know, I, you don't know. Like at a PFL, I, I've been let go. I, I don't work for the PFL. If there's something to do with it, I, I don't think so. But, I mean, it's like it's not like... 
people think you're a millionaire and once that it's imprinted some fighters actually thought they believed the, the internet you know and then you go yeah then it sounds it looks really bad but it's not it, it's absolutely not if i had it trust me you guys were going to get paid i will get it back from tom and i'm telling tom i say you got to do this you have to do it. it's killing me it's hurting my uh, my name i've been here and everybody knows me man i never screwed anybody over the uh, build a long name I, uh, for a long time and then something like this happens. I actually got in contact with another organization who wanted me as a president, and I was already too bare knuckle, and we were already going into it, and everything. And suddenly they changed owners, and I go, you know what? I'm out. I mean, I I do not want a second risk. That was literally for me that I said, promoting is not for me, man. I can do it with a buddy of mine is very wealthy, and if he decides to do it, I know 100% he's going to pay. He's the most sturdy guy, Darren Harvey. I mean, he will 100%. You know, I won't have a problem, but with well, people that I don't know. Manager, right? Yeah. Okay. Also, he, he did everything for her. He's, he's a really good guy. They had to, she had to take out a lot of things out of the book, what she wrote, because it wasn't true. Because once they were in court, they were, that was, the truth was been told, and that completely was the opposite of what she wrote in the book. So... Mm. So, uh, yeah, no, he's a very sturdy guy. He's the guy I know for 22 years as well. So uh, if there's somebody, a uh, right, right straight shooter is that guy, trust me. And, and if he would say something like, oh, you want to do a business? I'll immediately do it with him because that's a guy I 100% trust. Can cut off my hand if he would lie. That's how far I would go with believing that guy. I had been wa- oh, go ahead, guys. Well, I was gonna say I was just gonna say this part that the internet can just be an evil place. That's it. And, and, and reputations mean a lot. And our grandfather used to always say, um, Tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Yep. And I just want to tell the audience that we've known Boss Rudin a long time, and he's sitting here. And if you look at the people that he's surrounded by all the time, I've never heard anybody say anything bad. They've worked with him for a long time. Some of the, the greatest people I know, Marl Ronaldo, Kenny Rice, Andrew Simon, these are great people. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that you came here and you did this. Me too. I, I really, I, I need, we needed to do this uh, face-to-face and, uh, and so people can see me when I talk. They know. I, I, I just want them to understand. I feel. I mean, I, I, if there's nothing bothering me. I'm very easy with people, with other people. But once fighters... That, okay, now it's a whole different ball game. Now it's my peers who think about that about me. And I know all the other ones, I talk to them, they don't. You know, but just for him to have the little bit of a thought, that mm-hmm. really upsets me. That gets me. Those are the ones that hit the heart, right? It really does. Yeah. That's why I said, you know, that's why I want to be doing it uh, in studio. It's. Uh, I also want to corroborate something he said in the first hour, uh, first part of the show, about Burt Watson. And the one thing I really try... Uh, to hold on to is my, my word you know when people confide in me the good thing is I have a bad memory so I'll probably forget anyway and two I just I hate it when stuff has gotten back to me you know uh, about me when I was younger some friends screwed me over yeah, I, I don't like that feeling one bit I would never do that to someone else I'd rather just go to their face and go I don't agree with what you're doing but I would never talk shit you know like behind like that but anyway Burt Watson I, I can corroborate that he did pay him out of his pocket the reason I feel a little bit, you know, hesitant here is I'm trying to remember how it went down, but I do know that it was just something that was private between Bird and I. Um, but now that Boss, being the other party, has said that he did pay Bird, I can confirm that Bird told me that Boss had paid him. Mm-hmm. So, again, someone that's not going to be doing that type of stuff wouldn't reach into his own pocket and, and take care of him. You know, these yeah. gentlemen, he, he described uh, Jimmy Lennon. He went to Stitch. He didn't have to do that there. Uh, Bird got paid, and then Kenny said he. he didn't you're my the friend. And, and, he said, and "Give he me a hug because he was visiting with his father." He says, "If I see you, give me a big hug, and I'm good." So thank you, Kenny, for that. Did you give him a hug yet? Oh yeah, we did. You know, he came, and uh, I just talked to his dad on the way over. I call his dad every time. You know, Kenny's mom passed away, Edith, and she was such a wonderful woman. Every time, hey, handsome, how you do? She would call me handsome, and uh, as she passed away, so you know, I, I, I like every couple of weeks, I call Reggie. His yeah. father, because, you know, just want to... This guy's amazing, man. He's 90 years old, had open heart surgery. A week later, after the open heart, heart surgery, he comes in the, uh, to the doctor. And they said, uh, oh, I need to see a doctor. I said, oh, you're here for, to see somebody? He said, no, no, I just had the surgery. And she looks like, that, that was last week. And she goes, yeah, oh, okay. So they freaked out already. He's 90 years old, old coal miner, tough as nails. They go to the doctor. The doctor goes like, okay, uh, Reggie, can you do uh, this? Bring your hands up like this, and he says, "No, but I can do this." <laughs> if you want, you know, he's one of those guys yeah. who is indestructible. Really good guy. Wow. Um, you said Bert was one of the ones that helped save the show. I know there's been the a show. couple people: the, the sound guy, the matchmaker, the, the commission. 
you had some troubles, but there were some people there that really came to the rescue, and you got the show off. The show went off, and there were fights that night. And it was way, everything was against us. We, we had no <laughs> interviews. Thirty five hundred people showed up. Huh? Thirty five hundred. Thirty five hundred. We had no interviews. We had to do that the day before with, with Jessica, the camera right? that we yeah with Jessica Penner. Mm -hmm. We were doing the written interviews, and then Kenny was interviewed. We had five minutes because we had the camera for an hour and forty five minutes. Yeah. A stupid black backdrop. It looked horrible. You know what the cost? This is again. You can see what Tom doesn't know. He paid three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the production company. He had to pay him with trucks. I go, dude, this is like a first show. It's seventy, right? If you want to really want to uh, eighty, we want to go really big. Let's do hundred and fifty. But then you got a really big production show. He simply didn't know. He was and na he naive. And super naive. Somebody took advantage of him. Is and sorry, Tom, but you're an, he was an idiot in that regard. You know, in his own business, everything was running, but at that, he was just. It's just what it is. You know, I just proved here that it is all true what he said. Done. And I can, I can post this. I, I read things. that about the production. They, the first one left, right? Yeah. And somebody else had That to was also in. a big problem, you know, because, yeah, this guy went out scouting, did already everything. Frank Belmont, really great producer, you know, but, yeah, he didn't want to take the risk. He says, well, I get either paid half a prompt, otherwise I'm not going to do it. So then his last, uh, Tom says, okay, I can't do it because the money is frozen. And he went to this company. And he paid even, yeah, 325 I mean, that's, that should show you how much he knows about this game. Zero. He knew zero about it. Mm. Now he's got a warehouse with his clothing also. I can't even fathom being in this situation because you're right. You can understand why managers are mad. You can understand why fighters uh, are mad. Yeah. But you, you can't just sit there and not say anything, right? Like, that's got to be the worst position to be in. Yep. No, it is. Wow. It, 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 that bothers me. You know, if a fighter doesn't get paid, I fought, like I said, for 2,000 bucks. I know how hard it is to be a fighter, big skiddly from that stuff, you know, and then for these guys. And then try this, you know, I tried to save the show because it was almost off because the main event, Merriman, was suddenly off because Borky couldn't fight, which was good actually for us because we couldn't pay that money. But I was just worried. I go, these guys trained for two months and now they're not going to have a fight. We need to let them fight. So because I was on the understanding that they were going to get paid. But then... The whole crap happened. So, how was Merriman <coughs> able to win a lawsuit? He uh, did he win it? I thought I, no, I, thought I, think I read he, that. He, I or think he might he go after him because he he, he didn't did do it. Because I remember he didn't fight, and um, I mean, I something about he trained for ten day or ten hours a day. Hmm. I don't no, know. No, yeah, you yeah, listen. I that that was one of the biggest things for me also because I you know I was doing statistics with his four feet vertical leap, dude. That's a freak. I mean, he's a freak he was athlete. An awesome I would NFL player. Oh, yeah. I would love to see that guy Me fight. Too. You know, so I was really looking for it. Julian Lane. I was big on him. You know, and still big he on him. He just wants to bang, bro. Oh, I love that guy. And Robbie Peralta, yeah. Isaac Valley oh. Flag. They had yeah. some names on this fight card. Dude, and they were performing. The the fight. I don't know if you saw the show. It was a bad. Brandon Sharp was talking on the Joe Rogan podcast. He goes, "Dude, this was crazy," and it was. I mean, the fighters performed so well. That's why. You know, it's so hard for them now not to get paid. You know, it's, uh, but it is what it is. I hope that Tom comes through until now. Like I said, he hasn't lied one thing to me. I have all the proof what he said that actually happened. Or he's got to be the biggest scam artist, which I don't think, because otherwise he wouldn't have lost $500,000. And he faked the hospital papers and he faked the bank freezement statements. And he's, the fake, the, he's a great actor then, because he was crying on the phone. He, listen, that was, he was crying, and that evening he, he ended up in the, in the hospital. That's how bad it was. Oh, it's not true. Well, I got the proof right here. It's true. So now what's your next thing? You see what I mean? Yeah. So there's a third option. It's not either he's bad or he's not. No, this is the truth. And it is the truth. And I got to go with him. I have to until he proves me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Has this cost you a lot of sleep and stress? and like? Uh, you know, you can say that to people and uh, you ask my wife and you go, oh, his wife's going to say, you have no clue. If I would wake up at 4 o'clock, I cannot go to sleep anymore. It's the first thing I think about it. That's been on for a long time. Not now anymore. It's so uh, far away. Yeah, but it's you got like hammered pretty much. bad on social media. Oh, and, and I, I always wondered why you stuck by Tom's side, and now you've provided some of the insight into that, you know. But I, I wondered, you know, like maybe this was a personal friend or no? I just met him four days, and I have, I believe, I have a good judge of character, and I know this guy is like the way he's tipping people, taking care of people, and the people around him. I know he's a good guy. I know he's a good guy. He's just been taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. That was his biggest crime. And uh, and poor guy, because now he comes out, lost his business as well. You know, and I'm not saying this, oh, boo, poor, poor Tom, poor Tom. No, but I mean, come on, cut him some slack, because it is all true. I got to prove. 
you know so and then to just dig in and dig in and i can understand that people don't 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 think i don't understand i would be super pissed i would do the same thing i would sue i would do everything you know but that could be also the truth and if he speaks the truth we're going to take a quick break when we come back we're going to do our daily debate and don't forget in about 50 minutes we have marlon myers coming up it's mma junkie radio on fight nation channel 156 we have boss rooting in the house accounts but at least if you trust george <laughs> that, you know i paid him a lot of money under the table <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're gonna say next <laughs> <laughs> hey let's go shopping for a new car all right uh by the way nba fans nhl fans you got your score 2-2 here boston leads that series 1-1 or sorry 1-0 NBA fans, it's going to kick off tomorrow night at 9 Eastern, game one of the NBA Finals between the Golden State Warriors and the Toronto Raptors. Pre-game coverage starts at 7 Eastern with Frank Isola and Brian Scalabrine. Uh, live from Toronto as they get you ready for tip-off. Listen to every minute of the finals on NBA Radio, Series 207, XM86, and streaming on your phone and at home on Series XM connected devices and speakers. All right, goes. I think right now is a good time to do our daily debate. Let's do it. Hit it, Andre. The brothers Garcia seemingly can't agree on anything. Everybody knows it's duck season. Rabbit season. Duck season. Rabbit season. Whether it's food. Less filling. Tastes great. Less filling. Tastes great. Gambling. Always bet on black. I like red. Black. Red. 
Black. Red. Black, dummy. Or even social media. Instagram. Snapchat. Instagram. Snapchat. The same applies to the biggest stories in MMA. Time for MMA Junkie Radio's Daily Debate. You ready for the MMA Junkie Radio Daily Debate, guys? I sure am, and I'm excited for this one, George. All right, here we go. We're going to include Boss Rudin, Uh former UFC heavyweight champion. Former king of Pancrase three times, and one of the coolest guys we've met in this business. Here we go. Today's hashtag daily bait question for Adam and Me Junkie Radio. WWE and UFC have been top dogs in their areas for a while now. With AEW arriving and joining orgs like PFL organizations, like PFL, Bellator, and One Championship, which juggernaut do you think has the better chance of being dethroned as top dog? So... AEW was a big show here in Las Vegas, uh, and everybody's been talking about it, and so they're obviously going to be a threat to the WWE. Mm-hmm. And then organizations like PFL, Bellator, One Championship are going to be a possible threat for the They've all grown. UFC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so which one has a bigger chance of being dethroned as top dog goes? You go first. I'm going to go with the WWE. All right, why is that? This is my reasoning. If you look at the UFC, let's just say we did the 20th, 20 greatest fights of all time. They're going to come from different eras because at the end of the day, a fight is a fight and you're excited for it, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the WWE, they've gone through different eras, but it's been styles, right? That's going to change overall. And I think this AEW company has a good chance of maybe uh, reaching a different demographic. Uh, They say Vince McMahon is very personal with everything he does, Mm -hmm. but he's getting older. The same way you and I are getting older, boss, we're we're all getting older. And sometimes we just don't understand what them crazy kids are doing. That may happen to WWE because he won't let go of that control. So if I had to pick one, I feel like that one has the better chance of being You do realize WWE fills out stadiums for the WrestleManias and the Royal Rumbles, Mm -hmm. and they go overseas and fill out stadiums. Yeah. You, you do realize it. it was loud as shit over there at, at uh, MGM this past oh, weekend, I wasn't right? there, but which which of these two jugger- juggernauts do you think has the best chance of being dethroned, WWE or UFC boss? Yeah, I, I will go with uh, – I, I love that explanation, the way you were talking. I, I will go with that as well, simply because the UFC did such a great job at just being the top. Like, the next show is so much lower behind them. It's, it's, it's crazy how they, you know – Keep on being on top. So I think that's going to be just very hard for any organization in mixed martial arts to come up. That's why with the bare knuckle boxing game, we go, oh, there's something new. I can do something. I get a pension. You know, I can do something. Things. But, uh, yeah, in MMA, it's very hard to go up against the UFC. Mm-hmm. See, I'm a numbers guy. I know there's AEW and I know there's Ring of Honor and a few other orgs chasing WWE. <laughs> but I feel like there's some good money behind one championship in Asia. PFL's writing some checks out. You know, they paid a million dollars to their winners. Bellator and their DAZN deals, and they've been around. They got Scott Coker at the helm. So I just feel like there's bigger dogs chasing down the UFC. The UFC's got a lead. They're sprinting, but there's big dogs chasing after them. WWE, they got a lead, and they're sprinting. But I feel like, well, I don't know. Like, AEW, that was their first big show that I knew of. I think they may have, you know, been in existence before. And I know there's been, like, New Japan and and uh, Ring of Honor and a few of the others, TNA in, in the past. Mm-hmm. I just don't know if they're running as fast as these other ones, so I'm kind of on the other side. Fellas. But you realize it's happened before. WCW, they wreaked havoc for a while. Yeah. And WWE lost a lot of wrestlers, so something like this has happened to them. When's the last time you felt well, like Well, Pride like was like number Dana. one uh, for a while. True. Right? Yeah, but look at the run they're on now. And Strike Force was Go on closing. Craigslist. Are you going to see any that ads for Lamborghinis from Dana White <laughs> trying to get rid of them? Right. I told him right from the beginning, go to America uh, because you need to do it there because otherwise UFC, you cannot do it anymore. They never listened. I said, let me talk to the athletic commission. They never did it for three years in a row. And then slowly the UFC started getting bigger and bigger. And then finally they allowed me to go to the athletic commission. I talked. They changed it on the spot. They said, we're splitting hair. So he's 100% right. Boom. You're allowed. And it was done. I said, see, you should have done that three years ago because then you would have had a chance. That's when they got now, their momentum. Yep. They, they lost the momentum. They said, oh, no, we're doing great here. I said, no, no, the real money is America. Trust me. Always. Always America. Well, this one was close. Over 1,000 votes came in, and 56% said WWE. They agree with Boston Goes. 44% said UFC. Uh, close, They though. agree with me. So it was a good one. So yep. great question there. Thank you, the Junkie Nation, for your votes. Those are the readers of the site. And the listeners of the show. All right, we're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Marlon Marais, uh, mm-hmm. who's got a big fight coming up against Henry Cejudo. It's MMA Junkie Radio. I'm Fight Nation, Channel 156. Stay close. We'll be right back.
Dr. Jane goes. All right, we're back. And now we're going to talk to one of the two participants in the main event at UFC 238 coming up on June 8th in Chicago, Illinois. Henry Cejudo, the UFC flyweight champion, will be facing Marlon Marais, the number one Bantamweight contender for the vacant belt. And joining us now on the hotline is Magic Marlon Marais. What's up, Marlon? How you doing? Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. Hey, how are you guys? Glad Good. to talk with you guys, you know, and different time, different opportunity. And I'm more than happy to, to give you guys a little bit about how's my training and, and how I feel now, you know. Well, thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, I got Goes here with me as well. And we also have Boss Rudin, who called many of your fights at WS. Excuse me. <coughs> I almost choked here. WSOF. What's up, Marlon? Back in the day. So we're looking forward to it. Hey. Hey, what's up, Bob? Doing good, brother. I'm a big, big fan of you, man. It's a pleasure to talk with you again. Oh, man, I'm so happy you're doing so well in the UFC. I'm loving it. Thank you so much, Max. Marlon, so we used to talk to you since the WSOF days, and you used to whoop some ass there. You had a lot of title defenses. You had a lot of KOs. You know, uh, you, you were their biggest star for many years, you and Justin Gagey. And then you come over to the UFC, that first fight against Austin Sao didn't go your way. All that time, man, was, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of doubt from fans and media. How good does it feel to be in this position? Not that you're a vindictive person, but still, it bothers any any human being when their skills are doubted that they can compete against the best. And here you are fighting for a world title. Yeah, man, uh, I feel very happy, you know, with, with all I, 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 I got from now, you know with this big opportunity to fight for the belt and it, it's a chance man to just show to everybody and, and prove one more time where I belong you know I think I proved to everyone I'm the contender I'm the number one contender right now and I'm getting this shot you know and, and I, I got the keys man I got the keys I got the tools and uh, the preparation couldn't be better I feel better than ever weight's good it, it's just a matter of time Go out there next week, perform, perform well, and finish in Cejudo. Mm -hmm. And your mentor, your big brother uh, in the fight game, Frankie Edgar, he just got a world title fight as well. His is in July, so his will be about six weeks after. But that would be massive for your team. I know that he, uh, Frankie means a lot to you. He recently was on our show, and he says that he's learned a lot from you as well. So I know this could be big for you guys and, of course, your coach, Mark Henry. Yeah, I, I since I got here eight years ago, and and I was built as a fighter, and as an MMA fighter, you know, uh, I was built with these guys. You know, they taught me everything, and I, I just learn with these guys every day. And not just as a fighter, you know, as a man, as a team, as how you have to be to be a champion. You know, I got here. Frankie was champion, and he lost the title. He never changed. He's still the same. Now he's fighting again for the title. And it's just a, a good example, you know, then how you have to be and we ha what you have to do to pursue your dreams. And I did, man. I did all. I did more than, than I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, I put all on the line every time. I never said no. I worked hard. And now it's time. It's time to go out there and fight and do what I love. Mm -hmm. All right. Goes. What do you have for Marlon Moraes? Marlon, a guy like Henry Cejudo, when you look at his accomplishments, to be able to get a gold medal in the Olympics, then come into the UFC and win a title there, that's not very easy to do. Uh, when you look at his game, though, in the UFC, do you still can you still point out holes? Do you find holes when you're looking at him? Or is it just a matter of just being better than him that night? Man, we all got holes, and, and, and matchups makes champions you know and i think henry sahud is a great matchup for me i'm very confident and all i see him doing in the cage of course he beat a legend demetrius johnson he beat in yeah. my opinion one another guy that can be a legend in the future tj de la Chau. he's a great martial artist but we didn't get to see much his last fight i think tj got what what you what you need to beat henry I think was was a fluke, you know, it was just a matter of a day. That was Henry's day. But I work hard and I'm very well prepared. I'm well prepared for this fight and I don't wanna I don't wanna know flukes, you know, I'm going out there, perform, perform well and, and win and leave no doubt who's the best one thirty five pounder now. 
I know you can't give away any of your strategy, but can you kind of hint to us, is this going to be a longer night or a shorter night? Man, all depends, you know. Depends how Hamilton is going to perform. Depends how I'm going to perform. It's about the timing and momentum, you know. We're going to feel. I'm going out there for five rounds, five tough rounds. But we never know, you know. Maybe he will come too hard and he's going to go home earlier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boss, let me ask you a question. You were the three-time King of Pancrase champion. And so you fought primarily in Japan. You come over and win the UFC title. What did that mean as far as, like, circling your career, knowing that you could fight on two continents, answering to two different types of audiences? and Because I think this is something Marlon can relate to. He was a WSOF champ, but a lot of people always wondered, well, could he win in the UFC yeah. or wherever, you know? Like, uh, how, how was that satisfaction for you? Uh, it, it's big. I mean, uh, UFC is just the biggest thing there is, you know? And, and, and uh, for me, it did everything. Like, yes, the hardcore fans knew me from Japan, but then once I did the UFC, that's when I got known. That's where I got started doing TV stuff. It's because of the UFC, and Marlon has that too. And from the World Series of Fighting, he was the guy I always said. I always talked about Marlon. I say his takedown defense, he just moves out of the way. He's like a freaking matador, you know. His footwork is so fast, you know. And we always had a good connection. We did some things together also with Hanzo Gracie and everybody. I just love you, Mar uh, Marlon. What would be your, your how do you say, your dream win, way to win? Would it be a knockout or would it be going for a submission? If you could choose, you say, oh, this will be the best way for me to win. Against uh, nah, if, if they could win, I, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, boss. We like like to see people out, you know, and then that's my dream, you know. I want to put him out, and I want to knock him out. All right, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, now, Jessica Andrade uh, just became a world champion. She's Brazilian. Amanda Nunes, of course, holds two titles. You, you know, you can. For a while, there are a few of the Brazilian champions that dropped off, but now you're in a position to win. Even though you've been here for eight years, what would that mean for you to be a, a champion from Brazil, for a country so rich in history? You know, as far as wearing uh, gold in many of the top organizations in the world. Yeah, uh, last time I went to Brazil, I went to the school. I went uh, when I was young, when I was three, from three years old to ten, and that's a very poor neighborhood, you know, and that makes me think a little bit where I came from, you know, and, and where I am now. And so if, if you guys go there and you guys see where I'm from, you know, you're never going to believe that I was able to make through the United States and fight for the big league and now get into the UFC and fighting for the UFC belt. means a lot, man. means a lot for my people and means a lot for the kids that, that I, I spoke, that I talk with. And the dreams they, they, they told me they have, you know, and, and I, I encouraged them and I said, then you can do whatever you want, you know, you just have to work hard, believe yourself, and you can go wherever you want, you know, sky's the limit, and I'm fighting for the belt, but to be honest with you, if you, if you go to my town, if you go to my neighborhood, you, you can believe, like, man, a guy from here is fighting for a belt, you know, and I did all, and it wasn't easy, you know. I went down a couple of times, I got up, I went down again, I got up again, but I never, I never, I never gave up, and, and now I'm here, I'm fighting for the belt, I have the whole country in my back, uh, I don't care, I don't care if, if, if the pressure is on me, and I'm just very happy to go out there, and everybody, everybody know I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to give my best, I'm going to fight hard, and I'm going to win, you know, I'm not, I'm not going out there to just be in the UFC cage and signing couple auto couple autographs, take pictures. Uh, I'm on a mission. I'm going out there. I want to take that belt and bring that belt to my house. Nice. And you're talking about Nova Friburgo in Brazil, north north of uh, Rio de Janeiro, right, where the floods were a few years ago. Yeah, I'm talking about the neighborhood where I'm from, the Cordoeira. It's it's like a favela, you know, and and we have a school, small school. And like two minutes, three minutes from my old house, and and it's unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah, things don't change much, you know. Just like twenty years ago, wow. and you 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 still don't see improvement. You see, you still see the same problems. It's unbelievable, and and to be honest, it's it's worse, man. It's worse. And we we had a, a 
we had a gymnasium that we used to play soccer, you know, and then I was I was very upset because not that anymore. They they destroy everything, and and it's sad. It's sad that it keeps getting worse. Wow, sorry to hear that, Marvin. Yeah. Uh, all right, last thing here. I just want to leave you with this. First of all, good luck with the rest of your camp. Safe travels to Chicago. I can't wait to see you versus Henry Cejudo. It's going to be a great fight. But earlier you brought up TJ Dillashaw. And I just want to commend you for something because you never once brought up uh, the PED suspension that he's on. And um, I've also heard you answer to a lot of critics of TJ saying, look, regard, because we all know he made a mistake. All right. But you also said, hey, that doesn't mean that he still wasn't a good fighter. And a lot of people have taken an opportunity to bury him. But on many occasions, I've noticed on social media, you've never said a bad thing about him. So I, I commend you for, for that, Marlon. You've given a lot of respect towards him, and, and that, that's pretty cool to see. You know, it's just something different, and it stands out for I'm him. I'm not lying, you know. It's, it's true. Uh, man, I don't know names, and I can't mention anybody, but... We know a lot of people do a lot of shit. They use PEDs, but are they as good as him? They're not. You know, did yeah. they win the UFC belt? They're not. You know, so it's not the only thing that that makes you a champion, makes you a great fighter. You know, I don't know about him. I don't know about any other person. But if they do, you know, it's that problem. You know, I'm just a clean fighter. I don't do anything. You know, the maximum I do is like sometimes but i still don't believe i think it's placebo but who knows you know <laughs> yeah all right well i know you got to get going thanks for the time you gave us always on mma junkie radio we really appreciate it uh and i guess uh, we'll yeah. wait till june 8th to see the result it. okay thanks for the time marlon take care brother uh, all right man have a good night guys good, you too good show yo okay bye bye yeah man he um he said about tj dillashaw he said if it Regardless of the mistake he made, he's still a good fighter. He is. You know, cause <laughs> still need talent. And, and you know what Marlon said? He goes, he goes. If you want, he goes, go to PDs and see if you can win the title. It's fucking hard <laughs> to win a <laughs> UFC title. Yeah. You know what I mean? I read that and I was like, God damn, he's got a point. You know yeah. what I mean? So mm -hmm. everybody can point and do this, and I, it's you know, so easy at home. Right. To do that. But um, but uh, yeah, and and he you know he said possible future Hall of Famer, and it stood out to me that he just he didn't have a he had a chance to say something there, and and you know pile on but he didn't and he's uh so that, that shows me he kind of has a little bit of respect for the fraternity yeah. of fighters that he's, he's that he's a part of he's an amazing fighter but he's an amazing person too yep. marlon mm -hmm. Moraes. i remember at that that first wsof show when he fought um miguel torres and i remember somebody next to me at the end of the fight goes man miguel torres had a, a rough night he was off tonight and i, and I turn around and i go dude I don't think he had that bad of a night. I think that guy is just really good, mm -hmm. and we're going to figure that out in a couple of years. And sure enough, man, yeah. look what the guy's done. Fighting yeah. for the title. Yeah. I love that stuff. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. So Hudo's no joke either, man. It's going to be a great fight. All right, we're going to take our – we have one more break, right, Andre? Yes, sir. Let's do that. One last break, and then we'll close up shop. It's MMA Junkie Radio on Fight Nation, Channel 156. We have Boss Rudin in the house.
Or enjoyable. It's called the mute button. Here are those two numb nuts, gorgeous George and Goes. All right, a couple things about Boss here. He's got a website. It's BossRudin.com. Also, check out his Twitter handle, at BossRudinMMA. He also has a Facebook page with 500,000 followers, and I know he's there a lot. Um, one last thing here. In my mail, I got from Roots of Fight. They came up with another series for Boss Rudin, man. I love this one. Boss B. Rudin, Nederland. Yeah. Which is, I guess, how you guys say Shade Netherlands yep. in Dutch or something like that. Yeah. Because I love something that I can't get here. So, for example, when I grew up, Russia was part of the Soviet Union. So I love the ones that say CCCP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. USSR is pretty cool. But CCP, I remember I used to see the athletes wear like that. the sickle on it and stuff. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, man, that's pretty cool. That's like vintage, you know what I mean? So that reminded me of that. But that's pretty cool Yeah, The Roots of Fight put out another series. I, and I say another because I've seen others in the past. Yeah, it, the, the back says, it's only pain. It won't hurt. <laughs> that's one of my Oh, is that what it says? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. So check out Roots of Fight. They have a lot of athletes there that they work with in baseball, mm -hmm. boxing, uh, martial arts. They're really, I mean, I'm, I'm so honored to be part of that. In the beginning, they came to me and they wanted me as a Thai boxer. And I go like, dude, go to Roman Dagger's host, Peter Ertz. I mean, come on, I'm nothing compared to those guys. Like, I'm a great striker, but those guys are, <laughs> you know. So uh, so then we did an MMA line, and I, I love it because, you know, you're in the same line as freaking Bruce Lee. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that Muhammad I started fighting. Muhammad Ali, Frazier, I mean, you Helio name Gracie. Boom Boom Mancini. Every, I mean, Some good ones in yeah. there. Yeah. Love it. Boss, we have about 10 minutes left, maybe a little bit less, and I wanted to give you a chance. You got a lot off your chest today. We asked you some questions. Uh, we addressed a lot of the controversies out there, frustrations from you know a lot of the fighters. We know Johnny pretty well. Yep. Um, he used to live in Las Vegas. I, he's never struck me as a guy that's got a, a bad side in no, him. Oh, he's a great and, guy. And, look, he's a grown man. He – you know, he doesn't need me to go to bat for him. But what I've noticed, especially when watching Chris Lieben address some of this stuff on, on video and, and Johnny, is I think it's just uh, a frustration. You well, know what no, I mean? No, and, and the way I come in, or it's, it's, it's almost not I'm a, I'm, it's almost for Johnny. That's why I'm coming. I want him to understand that I'm not that guy. And then I'm okay. You know, like I said, if what other people think, I'm, I'm not really don't bother by it. It's close friends and especially my peers. And that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about. I know what is true, you mm -hmm. know. So I, I, I don't have a problem with anything. You don't believe me, you don't believe me. So what? You know, oh, I don't un unfollow you. I say, oh, my God, <laughs> I can't lift out today. You know, people say that. Oh, I'm going to unfollow you. So, <laughs> gee, I can't live with myself now. I mean, come on. You know, that's what we believe in. But people you know just make decisions really fast before knowing the other Right. Sight. And I wish that I would have talked to him personally. I did at the event, but of course, that was at the moment we still everybody thought that they were going to get paid. So, uh, yeah, no, I always respected him a lot as well. Is that something so where you wait five more months and to see what happens with Tom? Or will there be another round of calls and texts to some of these athletes that are, are probably still wondering? Or you know, Well, yeah, yesterday, for instance, Nick Gonzalez, he texts me and says, Hey, Bozzi, who are you going to come on? So I just saw your Facebook push. You think uh, so Tom's not going to pay? I said, truly, I truly believe yeah. that he will pay. You know, yes, it's going to be half, but you know, it's better than nothing. You know, he, he no, none of them can say that you've made promises, right? No, that's one thing you've never made is a promise or anything. This, this has just been your belief or your thought process of what you think might happen. That's it, because you know, for, for I had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if it was true, like the internet said, that I had a million of dollars, I, I would do it just like I did with uh, with Bert Watson and, and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Because then I say I will get it back from Tom. You know, because I'm, I'm going to be on him. You know, so and then I. I'm free of it, and the fighter's happy, everybody's happy. I just want everybody to be happy. And, uh, it's funny because Adam Labar, who also works for the company, just sent me a picture where people say um, that uh, Tom wasn't in the hospital. He says, I was FaceTiming with him. I actually made a picture FaceTiming. You know, well, it is a picture when Tom was in the hospital. You see, so again, this all is based that he lied and it was it, the bank never got frozen. Well, I showed the bank statement and I can actually post that also. I'll post it on my Facebook page plus the, the mission papers from the hospital. Okay, so if that was a lie, now tell me what the next lie is. You see, so that's why I simply cannot kick Tom to the side because he never lied to me. Mm -hmm. Everything that he said is true and I have the proof of it. So I hope they understand that now and I hope that people see it that give him a chance, and I know it's hard, and I know that uh, people, you know people with uh, uh, bank fraud, oh, you see, it's a, it's a circle, he's doing this all the time, that was one mistake he made, he made it right, come on, lighten up, it was not gun in the face, not something horrible, you see, because that is a different story for me, I don't work with mm -hmm. you.
So, um, on the personal side, I, I noticed your grandfather. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. Natural that's heavyweight. That's, that's about a year or two old now. How old two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. December. He's a big boy, huh? He's a big boy. My daughter's going to get married. She's uh, 30 already. That's my oldest daughter in uh -huh. Holland. She's going to get uh, July 5th. So I'll, uh, I'm going to Holland. And, uh, and to see them and, and man yeah he's a big boy too like she's six feet my, my daughter oh really so yeah this is like I said he's going to be a natural heavyweight I already told her he's uh, going to be in training camp of course she doesn't want to I asked her you know to start already on his shins just with your fingers so you know you calcify <laughs> the, the bones a little yeah. bit start early Right? That's yeah. what you want to do with the kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, anybody giving you any problems? Uh, you know, I, I always like to collect the street fight stories. You've told us plenty, but I haven't caught up with you in a couple of years. And no, uh, thankfully no, Nobody I wants any of you in th the mean streets of Thousand Oaks, right? La no, the what last one I had was, was, was a guy, and, and, and it, later on he explained it was because it looked like I came on the road. He said, did I come on the road? No. I said, okay. So he's flipping me off, flipping me off, and he gets completely angry. One this of was those, in California? Yeah, co close to my gym, full of tattoos. And he's flipping, and I think first he's talking to somebody else, and I go, you me? And he goes, yeah, for a blah, blah, blah. and he's screaming at me, I go, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, well, you want to dance, dude? And really? I go, yeah, and I go. Oh, was this on the freeway? No, uh, uh, to close the gym so we could stop, and I go, sure. And he goes, park the car <laughs> right here. <laughs> so I, sure. parked, I parked the car, I get out, and he, he immediately <laughs> realizes he's a Oh, you must have sapped the strength wow. out of him, dude. He's not expecting that. He's expecting, no, no, I don't want any problems. Mm -hmm. He closed the door, locked it up, and he opens the window like this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, so you guys pulled over? Oh, yeah. And, and I stepped happened? next to him. I get out, and he wants to get out, but he sees me, and he closes the door, and then he opens the window, and he goes, yeah. He says, obviously, you have a nicer car than I. I go, whoa, whoa, whoa what? And he says, yeah, you can beat the crap out of me. And I go, you think? I go, tell me, what did I do wrong? He says, you looked like you came on the road. I said, did I come on the road? No. So it looked like I came on the road, and that's why you're flipping me off. That's what I said, and then I just walk away. I, I don't even come in conversations with people now anymore. I just, you know, it, it's so useless. <laughs> wow. What I like to do is when they flip me off, that's why he got angry. Because once he flipped me off, I do this. <laughs> and then they get really angry because it's not working. You uh -huh. know, if, if they flip me off, I got to be, oh. But I start laughing at them. And then they get really excited. Wow. That's when he... You want to dance. That was his line. You, you want to dance? dance? Sure. sure. I go, sure, park right there. And he parks. I go, he's it. I'm an idiot. Do you think he recognized you? I don't know. I don't know. He should. I mean, my gym was literally a quarter mile away. Same street. Wow. So, uh, yeah, some people. But uh, I love those you know, stories. But the, and I love that also because that, part, that kind of guy, he... He would do it to uh, anybody right. else. You, you saved yeah. someone else from That's getting it. bullied or getting their ass exactly. for no reason. You know, you get exactly flat top, you know, like a blockhead and then the freaking tattoos and the tank top. Is <laughs> Brock? Yeah. Huh? Brock Lesnar was on the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. plug the Almost gym. Like plug the gym. So you have, um, the, I like that story you told uh, earlier on about the weight loss. So th for anybody that thinks, oh, well, you got to be a fighter, you know, you're, you're doing what, like kids jujitsu. Uh, cardio kickboxing all the full everything like, yeah. what we do is a woman's challenge and a man's challenge and they come in and you can get an, uh, a, a free membership for a year if you win this thing right so 20 people sign up women let's say it's women if you see the results if you go to the website or Facebook page and you see people before and after you're going to think it's photoshopped you're not going to believe it and it's 100% truth what people can do in six weeks it's just really, it's, it's incredible. And from these people, of course, once they start training, they catch the bug, and then, you know, from the 20, 15 stay, you know, because they love it. And then the kids come in. So it's a great system to, to let people know because everybody thinks, oh, six weeks I can do. But then they see what they can do in six weeks, and they completely transform. They start watching the food, and you change their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing about our gym. Yeah. Our gym also is no profanity. There's nobody walking around with no shirts. There's, you know, it's a very Eagle clean gym. Talent. Eagle ill, yeah. Uh, Okay. Ego kill style, which is true, you know. And uh, so, so the address is 880 Hampshire Road, Suite X. Suite, suite X, yeah, it's okay. a really weird. In Westlake Village, California, 91362, 805-496-4472 for questions. And the gym is, sorry, the website is EliteMMAGym.com. We have about one minute. I also wanted to ask, there was a tragedy in Westlake? Or that was there, yeah. You know, okay, that's funny that you say that. I was so busy with all the crap in Wyoming. My wife texts me. She says, you should read the news. She's getting aggravated. Some they, had to evac they had to evacuate for the fires. And then a day later, the shooting. Mm -hmm. oh, man. Shoot, the guy walks in. And my student was there. Stopped the, the, the Prius. Uh, the, the, the Uber stopped. They heard the shots. They downed in the If he was two minutes early, he would have been inside. Wow. Yeah. He was literally about to get out of the car, dove in the car, and then... The shooting happened. So I didn't know anything of this because I was so insane because everything went wrong at the show in Wyoming. Wow. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. 
All right, boss. Well, thanks for coming out. It was great. We had a great thank time. You. Some great stories there. You want to dance? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Marlon Marias also for his time. Yes. Good luck to him against Henry Cejudo at UFC 238. And I'm not sure if I finished saying this. So it was EliteMMAGym.com for Boss's Gym. It's in Westlake Village. Check out the challenge that he's talking about. Sounds like it's really, really cool yep. for a lot of you that want to change your lives and lose some weight. All right. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of MMA Junkie Radio. Let's see who we got lined up tomorrow. Uh, looks like Danny Castillo is going to come back. Um, and also maybe Kevin Holland from UFC Middleweight. Cool. All right. So for Boss and Andre back east and goes, I'm George. Have a nice day, and don't forget to go out there and be a champion. Boom.